This is a wine from South Africa. Claret. So, Avon Claret Blanc 2019 vintage. It's got 13% booze on it. So these guys uh, established in 1754 when uh, the farmland was uh, granted by the governor of the Cape of Good Hope. These are 45-year-old vines in uh, Breda Kloof, which is in the Western Cape, which is basically uh, right down the bottom. It's the pointy bit at the very, very bottom. Um, oh. And uh, of South Africa. And um, so this is um, a sample bottle. Um, I think this, this is about 25 quid, I think, somewhere in the mid-20s. So, yeah. you know, a punchy price point for uh, South African white. Um, but... Let's give it a shot and see what it's like. Um, South Africa, um, uh, obviously, they went through a massive turbulent time with regards to uh, um, um, politics. Yeah, politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the 1990s onwards, uh, when sanctions were, were lifted, they have, have exploded. And I really like South African wine. There, there's a lot of different things coming out of it. But this is this is um, some 45-year-old vines that are about to be grubbed up. And, really? Um, yeah, yeah, they're about to get, get shot of them, I think. And... Oh. Uh, and so they've they've made them into one wine, and uh, this is this is the fun part of South Africa, is that because there are all of these interesting old plots of vines around the place, because they, even though I, they sort of tend to get grouped into a new world country, because really internationally their their presence has only really been since the nineteen nineties, um, they're actually a really old winemaking country. How would you? Um, how is that different to Australia though? Because Australia. Um, they, they, you know, they go back a couple of hundred years. Yeah. South Africa goes back five hundred years, practically four hundred years. Good point. You know, they're old school. Yeah, yeah, but yes, but you know, they came. Uh, the British came to Australia well, later. Wasn't, <laughs> yes, <laughs> pretty much. Well, it's the, um, it was the Dutch. In, yeah, in, in but South, but but that's America. the thing is is that is that South Africa's winemaking history is ancient. They just had a period of their history which came really into the modern time. Where, where internationally, well, yeah, no, it's, it's you. There was nothing. Like so. for example, Boschendal. Yeah, yeah. It's commercial. It's in the supermarkets, but it's so good. I've that never was, had it. That was my first, uh, first, um, uh, first time I came across South African Chard, and I loved it. Yeah. So this is a Rhone grape variety. Mm -hmm. It's oily. It's aromatic. It is. It's. It's got a sort of almost uh, sort of um, soy saucy saltiness to it. Oh wow! Yeah, it's got Umami. a sort of yeah. It's it's got that sort of Chinese sort of. Um, uh, yeah, it does. You're right. You know how how when you go to a Chinese restaurant, there's that sort of sesame oil meets soy meets sweetness meets sourness sort yeah. of thing yeah. that's coming out of this. Yeah, so absolutely sticky pork, sticky pork. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, prawn crackers. There is like a sort of saline, dusty, yeah. crunchy element. Um, Damn, but I mean, before that, I was just picking up on white peach. and. <laughs> but, but there's that too. But there's that too. It's got a sort of an elegant viscosity to it. Mm -hmm. Lovely. That's gorgeous. Lovely, oily, mm. silky, creamy texture. Um, I'm bagsy in that. You're also getting this pepperiness coming through as well. Ooh. Some really nice, rich fruit to it. Um, it's it's great. We're going to take this on. It's and really uh, Yeah, it's brilliant. You should give this a shot. 